So the, what we've got at the moment is this uh, side panel. Um, now we've got it working pretty well like we like. And we can fill it with whatever content and so this is good so far. Let's now work with the, uh, the ability to make that pop-up screen. So in the example we've got um, this little screen that pops up maybe to show you some quick content again for a different purpose. So this is going to be um, a pop-up screen. This one, in a technical sense, I suppose we could also do it as an aside. Uh, this should still work as an aside, but we're going to do it as a section because perhaps this is content that is accessible from other screens. This is going to be the about screen, about the app. So it could be accessed from the home screen, it could be accessed from the art screen, whatever. So an aside really would work best that it is attached to a section. We're going to access it from the home screen, but we could access it from any other screen. So in our HTML, go back to your HTML if you're not, if you're not there yet. At the very, go to the very end of the document. Mine is about 240 lines long. Just go all the way to the end. We've got slash section that ends the, um, the PC section. We'll give ourselves some more space here. We'll add a comment. Pull this up here. We'll add a comment here that this is going to be our about section. And then we'll write the section tag. So this will be a section of content. Data role page. so that we can reference it, it needs an ID. We'll just call that about. We'll make it look nicer in a moment, but I just want to put in some content inside of that section. Pop a box. I'm building it little by little. It's going to be a new section. It's a new page. <coughs> Comment there that reminds me about section. It needs an ID so that I can access it via a link. About is fine. And then a little content. We'll have it have a picture and text and other things in a moment. But this is a section. And I want to access it via a button. A button on the, the home screen to start off with. So let me let you finish writing this. And then uh, we're going to back up to the, to the home section. We're going to reuse that grid, right? We left a grid there, hopefully. There's a grid where we can put some buttons at the bottom of the screen, and we'll have a brand new button for, for launching the about, about the app, or specifically about the school. Okay, so let's back up probably very close to the top of the document. Or I can do search ID equals uh, home. So it's about line 27. And I, I did a search. Only one thing in my whole document is home. And I know it has to have the format ID equals quote home. Notice I didn't bother with the ending quote because it'll take us to the right place. So again, get used to using search. It's really useful. It's not just to uh, you know, find something in a document. In code, it can be very useful because um, here I just made it search. You know, I could have made it, I, I, this could have worked right here most likely, ID equals H. Well, I might have had something else called like uh, hello. 
a screen called hello and that might not have worked but you know home like that that would have worked anyway line 27 back to the section of home and we'll scroll down a little bit more we've got that um, grid line 61 within block A again uh, we'll say about SDCE this is going to be a button that launches this pop-up and we'll create the button as we've seen other buttons by wrapping a uh, an A tag around it to create a link href of course and uh, sometimes it's easy to make this mistake but remember pound symbol here and then about the ID is about but the href is pound about We already know that we also want data dash uh, data role button so that it behaves like a button. I want this to really feel like a pop up, so we will add data dash transition. equals pop. This will make an effect of the content that we're loading to pop onto the screen. And then an icon. Data dash icon. What's good for the about screen? Uh, maybe the uh, maybe the eye, if it's called eye. Info. I think there's one called. Oh, not literally the eye. The letter. Yeah, I think it's info. Information. I think we can look it up, of course. But let's see if that works. So go ahead and save it. Uh, let's see if you get the button. Let's see if the info data info data icon info. Let's see if that's the right icon. Down at the bottom here, yeah, info will work. So, uh, so it's linked to the about section, data roll button, animation pop, I'll see that in a moment, data icon info. I click. We have a very, very boring pop up screen, so you might not have really noticed much. I saw a very subtle animation of that popping out. Did you see it too? But it's not really popping open like a dialog box like I'm expecting. So actually we need one more thing. Um, this, this we've seen before. Nothing new. Well, data transition we might have brushed, uh, brushed past, but now it'll be more obvious. We need one more thing. That section needs an additional data element. The section that we just created, it had data role of page, but it's not behaving like a dialog box. So let's go back to that. So all the way back to the bottom, all the way back to that about section, line 241, data role page. Like I said, I like to keep ID as the last element. I don't believe it technically matters, but I like to keep it at the end. We'll add a brand new item here, data dash dialog equals true. Make this page behave like a dialog box. Notice it's spelled this way, not the other way. Dialog. Now try it again. We've added a new data dialog property to this section, and now it should behave a little bit more like a dialog box, a pop-up box, plus the animation that we've added, 
data transition pop should then make it pop open. Question? Let me take a quick look. That might be out of our scope at the moment. But um, what's the question? Oh, then okay, yeah. Uh, we that's got its own way to do it that we need to to look up. But there is a way to do that. All right. Did you get this weird pop up? One weird pop up. What what mine looks like, and hopefully yours does. Got the button. I click it, and then this pop up happens like that. The whole screen kind of fades away. We have the word pop up box. It looks terrible, but it did. I did see an animation of pop, and then I'm stuck here. I can't click anywhere to go back. Really, I have to press back. But then it unpops, kind of, and then I'm back. So that's how it's so far. It's not done yet, but I'm on the right track. Does this look okay for everyone? Anyone need some help? All right, let me pull my code back up. So the trick is that right there, line 241. Data roll and page, as we've seen before, data dialog true. And sometimes it's confusing that the dialog, you know, this is the other way to spell dialog also, right? D-I-N-L-O-G-U-E. That one doesn't work. It's dialog, this method. Well, this section, because it's a section, this can also take a header section, a content section, and a footer section. That's why it looks so incomplete. So actually, let's remove that pop-up box text, that paragraph. We've just got section. And we will add to it header. And... Uh, article and then not a footer and we don't need a footer a, it's gonna look weird a pop-up box that has a footer you don't quite see that you could if you want to of course and then we need to define the data roles here header and content We've seen this before. Section and a page. The new thing is data dialog. True. And we're going to have a header with an H1, article with the content, with whatever pictures and text we want. So I'm feeling in a little more content to my dialog box. Save it and, and run it and see how it looks. The main idea is that now we're structuring the look of this dialog box a little better with a header and with an article and with their data roles. Say that again. What do you mean switching? Like we took out that pop-up box. Then oh yes. That out yeah, that was just a little placeholder to make sure it was working. And after we saw that it was working, then we're putting some real content, header and article. So this allows us to put more content. Yeah, because uh, just simply having the pop-up 
text like that it was just proof of concept. So if it worked, you get this pop-up, you've got the header, you've got the article, a close bo box was automatically added for us. Close that, it goes away. <laughs> For the moment, yes. But how did I tie into line 27, the, account, the uh, new entry at, in line 40? How did that tie back into line 27? Uh, let me back up. Line 27? Right earlier when we were putting in the ID. The, yeah. Line 61. Line 61. I think it was line 61. Well, okay, line 61. Line. well how the, that ties into right here, because that href is saying show this pop-up box. The pop-up box is called about. So that's what that is saying there. When you click that button, it's going to make the pop-up content appear. And that content is in a section called ID about. Um, possibly. Let's look at the documentation. I, actually, this pop-up right here was sort of like what you were asking, so if you want to look at that documentation, it's under pop-up right there. But as for other ways that we can work with this, it's going to be somewhere else. You have to look up where within the documentation. We've got all the possibilities for, for that dialogue, but I'm sure there's some options that will work better for your uh, purposes. But at the, the default, what we've got here then is a dialog box that pops up. So we will uh, we will fill in more of this content as as our time goes on a little bit because what's going to be in the about screen is a picture about the school a little bit of real text about the school and eventually we're going to have some more complex stuff because on this screen will also be the ability to uh, to take some user input input to customize the app that'll be later which uh, will allow people to add their name and then their name will appear throughout the app. So an input dialog box, we'll get to that later. And then this is also going to be the screen where a person can then get a map, directions to the campus. That again will be a little later. So at least we've got this pop-up working, hopefully. Um, that, that button down there about SDCE, I want to do the same thing to that button like I've got on the art. I, I don't want it to be as big, I want it to be centered just like that. So I've already done the hard work. I've written the CSS rule. 
I just now need to apply it again right here. I'm going to go back to line 61 where I've got the link to that about button. And just as before, div class UI grid A, inside of the quote, we call this uh, grid uh, center, align, what did I call it? Backwards, align center. Grid align center. Confirm right here. Oh, yeah, good memory. Grid align center. So um, adding to that class, just like with the other screen, now then the those properties get attached to this to this particular grid because it's a class. And then one last thing to the to that button, we then we add the data inline true. So that then the button doesn't expand all the way. It just shows enough of the text and the icon. And because of grid align center, the items in the grid will be centered within each cell. So the last thing, adding adding to that button, data roll button, data transition pop, data icon, info, and then data uh, inline equals true. And again, that's the, that's the point of CSS, that's the power of CSS. Perhaps you need a little bit of setup in the beginning, and then it'll be a time saver as time goes on. That's the whole point of, a, of software, of, of an algorithm. You figure out what needs to be accomplished, and maybe in the beginning it might take a moment, but then once it's figured out, you apply the technique, you apply the algorithm, and then that's the time saver. So all I had to do was uh, apply the class up here, grid align center, and then also the data inline true, and it then centered the contents of that grid. Back up where? So something is if something is wrong with my alignment, then I should go back over to the CSS class to make an adjustment in the class alignment center. Well, it's not working with class alignment center. It's working with um, I mean grid alignment center. Yeah, it's got grid align center and simply text align center. Well, but for some reason it's making it bigger instead of smaller. So we've made that pop-up box, we've made the side panel, 
on the art screen. We'll have to add some content to these sections in a bit. And then in, under computers, we might be forgetting that the concept of the computers screen was going to show uh, dividers and, and buttons as in a divider for basic computer classes, intermediate computer classes, and advanced computer classes. So I want to work on that. Um, any final questions before we go on to that? We want to start adding the content to the computer screen. But is everything working up to this point for everyone? Anyone need some help? Yes, as I was stating, when I was here, I went over to check to make sure this is confirmed with what you have there. Can you show me what it is? Uh, yes. And then instead of it being smaller, it makes it. All right, so these, uh, these items right here, I want to uh, define that a little bit more, and then I want to actually make them work. So I need to jump down to the section where these things are at. Uh, I might not remember what this is called, what data role it is, or anything like that, but I can see that it's something called divider, some text that says divider. So I can, of course, scroll down. You might find it faster than this, but again, if you've got 500 lines of code, you'll do a lot of scrolling. What I mean is I'm going to do Control-F in Notepad to do find, and I'm going to look for something called divider. Divider. And I might have other things called divider, but notice this is also capitalized, capital D. So divider, and I can say match case. So this will jump me to wherever in my code where I've written the word divider with a capital D. I might have used divider lowercase elsewhere in a regular sentence, but at the moment I know really the only place where I probably have divider with a capital D is where I need to edit. So match case will search for what you've written and match the uppercase and lowercase. Next, there it is, line 207. So line 207 is our element UL. What did I say UL was again? Unordered, Unordered list, bullet points. This is bullet points that has a data role of list view. Data in set true. Um, and then LI, a list item with the word divider. And another list item, LI, and then a button, and another LI with another button. So it's just bullet points, but then it's elevated with data roles, list view, and then we've got um, data role list dash divider role heading, and that's where the divider is, and each individual button just has a data theme, which we should remove actually, and another list divider. So let's edit this a bit. Uh, oh, one thing before we edit it. You're perhaps curious, what's data inset? Hmm. Change that to false and see what changes. Before I explain what data inset is, change it. If something is true, what happens if it's false? If something is false, what happens if it's true? So try to change line 205, data inset true, to false. Can you articulate what changed? <coughs> So with inset, there's inset true, and with inset false, it spreads out to the whole screen. So inset true divides it from the edge. It's no longer connected. It's got the drop shadow. It's, it's separate from the edges. Inset false, it goes right to the edge. 
and then I would need to maybe edit some CSS so that it's not bumping up here. But you've seen this kind of interface on an app probably, where you've got different items to choose from in a screen going across end to end to achieve that data inset false. The default was true, so it looked like that. You've seen that in apps as well. So whichever one you like, but I'm going to go, I'm going to put it back to true. I like that it's divided. That's okay. So under divider, the actual content of the list item, divider, this is where we're going to break it up into our beginning, intermediate, and advanced classes. So we're going to say uh, this is going to be a list of beginner classes. The actual class itself is the button here, which will be, uh, I don't know, PC101. The next button, PC102. So there's a little section that is divided for beginner classes. PC 101 and 102 is a class, a, a course. Then we've got a divider, another divider. This one would be intermediate. This is for intermediate students. And then it ends. We don't quite want it to end yet. We want it to have a button or two for intermediate classes. So going back to what we've already looked at, notice the structure. If we want a divider and if we want a button. So we, we need a button for our intermediate classes. So after the list item, after the, the, the item for intermediate, add another list item. Uh, don't add the data theme C, who actually we will need to remove that in a moment. We need another list item, and then this one um, has the A tag. Uh, PC201. href pound symbol. The pound symbol is uh, is a dummy link or a null link. It doesn't go anywhere yet, but it just behaves like a like a button, like a link. And this looks like a button because it's it's of the built-in jQuery mobile CSS. If there is an A tag inside of an LI tag, inside of a inside of a UL tag with a data role of list view, make that look a certain way. I'm seeing also from the existent code data transition slide. I want to keep that as well. It's going to act weird, or not act weird, but it's going to be jarring to the user if these buttons behave a certain way and then one button behaves another way. That's an example, again, of causing user friction. Not as catastrophic, obviously, as other things, but then you don't have this consistency in your interface. That's a bit off-putting even subliminally. So data-transition slide to see if we're on the right track. Let's save this and run it in the browser. Now instead of it having the plain old divider text and button text, it's got the text that we wrote and we've added a new button, PC201. that. These are the dividers. These are the actual courses. They are clickable, although they don't do anything yet. We add, we just added 201. There it is there.
I want to back up and remove any instances of data theme C. Data theme C is actually not really relevant. Remember, this is a leftover from when we created this via Codica. It was using jQuery Mobile version 1.3. And we've got 1.4. And in 1.4, this is deprecated, meaning it's no longer required. It's not really uh, part of the, the standard. So on line 214, remove data theme equals C. Just move that, remove that completely. And 209. Just leave it as a plain list item. And these are buttons, but they're not active yet. They want to go somewhere, but in this case, for example, PC101 says pound symbol, which is just act like a link, but it doesn't go anywhere. PC102 says pound page one, which means go to page, go to something called page one, which doesn't exist. So you might, it might either do nothing or give you an error. And then we've got uh, PC201 that we just made with a pound. So we know that those pages, we're going to create them. So we're going to fill them in. They're not going to go anywhere yet. But we're, we'll call this, um, or we can literally call it PC101. Actually, the way I want to do this is um, only one item within the group will be clickable. So if I have PC101, 102, 103, they're all, they would all go to the same extra screen. I don't need all three of them to be clickable. So actually for PC102, we're going to remove the href completely. It's going to be an element within the section of basic computers, but that one will just not be an active link, only PC101. And I want to change my link of href actually just to uh, basic PC. Basic computers. For the PC201, that'll go to intermediate computers, which I'll just call int PC, intermediate. Again, these pages, these sections don't exist yet. So if we try to load them, if you try to click on them, nothing will load because these pages don't exist yet. We know that eventually they will. So we need to do what we need to do is create those sections. Um, we're going to create a section called Basic PC. So we'll go to the end of the document. We have the section ID about. We're going to need a new section. is basic PC classes and then a little practice here we could have done this back in Codica maybe we didn't have that idea yet but practice section we'll, what we'll do is create a skeleton and then we will copy and paste it to save us some effort
right? That ID, I'm not making it up, that ID comes from the link up on top. I don't know if you've noticed this or if I've mentioned it, that if you select some snippet of code in Notepad, it will highlight throughout your project. So I've selected the word basic PC. If I scroll back to 210, it's also highlighted. So this is something useful in most code editors. Here also in Notepad, this is to confirm. Because if I name this basic computers, there's no element anywhere. If I do a quick scroll, nothing highlights. That means I didn't use the same name. So I'm calling that section basic PC. It's going to need a header and an article, but not a footer. And this goes back to when we were when we were sketching out here the when we were sketching out the different screens. Remember, we had screen A and B and C and so forth. So this is one of those screens that. Uh, is not going to have <coughs> a header, uh, a footer that is, but it will have a header and an article. Data roll header h1 basic PC classes The article is, has a data role of content. We're going to copy and paste this to save some effort in just a moment. I want to see if this works so far. Save it and run it. What should happen is that now if you click on the PC 101 link, now there is a target. Now there is a new section with an idea of basic PC. So the screen should load up, which brings us to some issues, which we'll see in a moment. But Check your code works, save it and run it, and hopefully it loads up some of this content. All right, so if I uh, if I click on that PC 101 button, basic PC classes. And then if I back up, well, I don't have any backup method here. I have to rely on the web browser. We've got the data transition slide. So if it didn't quite work, we'll do a break in just a moment. But um, this is opening up a new screen full of content. It's a new section. It took me to a new screen. I'm not going to put in the navigation buttons here. 
they don't quite work for this screen. I want to show some screen uh, content, be done with it, and then go back <clears throat> to my previous screen. So there exists a jQuery mobile data property that will build in the ability to simply go back to the previous screen. That's what I need here. Because once I visit this screen, I'm stuck. If I use the back button in the web browser, I go back. Yeah, but I don't have a web browser eventually when I've got it as an actual app. I need to have a way to navigate throughout the app it, itself. So we will add a new item here. Line 256, data role header. We're going to add a new property here. Data dash add dash back dash btn btn equals true. This huge property here, what it's doing is it's going to automatically, as necessary, add a back button to this page. And the purpose of this is to simply take us back to the previous page. We can do it in more complex ways, of course, but there's an element built in that will make an icon appear with a back ability. And we're attaching it to the header of that section. Data dash add dash back dash btn. So, of course, it's got to be specifically written like this. There we go, it added the back button for us just like I was expecting. We're gonna we're gonna do the break just a moment. We're gonna do a break in just a moment. So the um, the concept that's happening here then is uh, a brand new screen of content and the new screen is a section and we're calling that via the link. So it's just about time for our next break, 8.12. We'll take uh, another 10-minute break. When we come back, we'll, uh, we'll proceed. I'm going to save my work and put it in the network folder if you want it, and then also call me over if you need some help. So we'll be back at 8.22.